Once upon a time, a mathematician posted a video, a video about computing the largest Fibonacci number in one second. He used some big brain matrix math in C++ to reach the 4 millionth Fibonacci number in one second. But I think we can do better, like a lot better. Welcome to the fastest algorithm for computing Fibonacci numbers. Firstly, what are the Fibonacci numbers? The Fibonacci numbers are a sequence of integers defined by the following recurrence relation. The nth Fibonacci number is the sum of the previous two Fibonacci numbers. It's as simple as that. In fact, we can take this definition literally, plugging in the base cases into our function to pass a lead code challenge. However, our tiny function takes an eternity to compute the 42nd Fibonacci number because the number of times we call the function grows exponentially at the rate of phi to the power of n. To combat this rookie mistake, we ditch recursion and adopt an iterative solution where we store the whole sequence in a DP array. This way, we always have instant access to the previous two numbers required to calculate the next number in the sequence. This easily gets us to the 100,000th Fibonacci number, but there is still one more optimization we can make, called the sliding window technique. Instead of storing the whole sequence, we only store the last two Fibonacci numbers, as the rest are useless to us. This saves a ton of space and lands us at the 300,000th Fibonacci number in under a second. This is about as far as most programmers can make it because beyond this point lies the matrix. But like most of us, I don't know jack about matrices, but I do know how to read a Wikipedia article. Apparently, the Fibonacci sequence shares some identities with the Lucas sequence, which has the same formula but different base cases. The Lucas sequence starts with 2 and 1 instead of 0 and 1. Most of the identities here are useless to us, but there are four equations that caught my eye. The first identity states that the nth Lucas number is the sum of the previous and next Fibonacci numbers, which is equivalent to twice the next Fibonacci number minus the nth Fibonacci number. By rearranging this equation, we can solve for the next Fibonacci number by taking the average of the current Fibonacci and Lucas numbers. Likewise, we can use another identity to perform a similar calculation to retrieve the next Lucas number. Now we have a way to calculate the next numbers in the sequence, but this takes O of n steps like a sliding window algorithm, whereas the matrix method needs only O of log n steps. We need a way to halve the input size at every step to have a chance at beating the math nodes. That's where the next two identities come in. We can find the Fibonacci number at 2n by taking the product of fn and ln. For the corresponding Lucas number, we can square ln and add or subtract to depending on the parity of n. Since we know how to increment and double the nth Fibonacci number, it's possible to represent any whole number as a series of increments and doubles by following a simple pattern. If n is even, halve the input or do a bitwise right shift and apply the doubling formula. If n is odd, we decrement it to make it even and apply the incrementing formula. Following this rule, we guarantee that we only take O of log n steps, because whenever we encounter an odd n, we always make it even and then halve it. So it turns out recursion is cool again, and Python is quite slow. I can't see very well, and my math is feeling a bit rusty today. Enough with the puns, it's time to write some code. The first step is to add the dash u package with cargo so we can work with big integers in Rust, as the Fibonacci sequence grows at an exponential rate. The way a big integer works is it stores integers in a vector or list so that it can be resized when it overflows. I have a skill issue, so I've decided to depend on a Rust crate instead of making this myself. Our function is very simple. We first define the base case of zero, then code the increment formula for odd inputs, and finally implement the doubling formula. Optionally, we can also include support for negative numbers. All that's left to do now is to chuck in some driver code that can time our function. After running our program, we can see that it takes less than a second to compute the 20 millionth Fibonacci number in just a few lines, beating the gold medalist of 4 million by a decent margin. I think we can all agree to call this Pyhedron's algorithm, even though I just stole the formula off Wikipedia. Now it's important to note that calculating the Fibonacci numbers this way is highly dependent on the efficiency of the big integer implementation as well. As mentioned by some users on my Reddit post, using GMP through RUG produces much better results, but I had trouble installing it on Windows, so I gave up on the idea. I hope you enjoyed this Fibonacci video, and make sure to like and subscribe for more dev logarithms. 
I thank the people on Reddit who gave me support, offered me their unique advice, and even accused me of being autistic.